What's up guys, it's Zane bringing you another video in my series on counter economics. Today, in today's video, I want to discuss the idea of capitalism as a process rather than a static idea. Many people often venture to define things like capitalism or socialism, and in doing so, they create this, these static ideals such as a system predicated on the recognition of individual rights, as the objectivist might say, or the worker's ownership of the means of production, as the socialist might say. Some may even appeal to more broad representations like private ownership of the means of production for capitalism. But here we can run into a bit of an issue, such as the ship of Theseus. At what point is capitalism no longer capitalism? The ship of Theseus is a thought experiment that creates an overarching theme throughout philosophy of being versus becoming. This experiment asks if a ship were to progressively have every plank replaced by new ones, over time to where none of the original planks remained, would it still be the same ship? However, for purposes here, I would like to use a different rendition of the thought experiment. If you were to progressively remove planks of a ship one by one, at what point is it no longer a ship? One may refer to a teleological notion, that once it no longer is able to fill, fulfill its purpose, it is no longer a ship. But this brings the concept into the realm of action and purpose and fulfilling a need. If we were to try and analyze it definitionally, we would seem to run into a continuum problem. This example can highlight the somewhat vacuous nature of definitions when trying to reflect something meaningful onto reality. Even when looking from a teleological response to this, it seems like this doesn't really check out analytically though. For example, if a ship has a hole in it and it starts to sink, it is no longer fulfilling its purpose. But most people would still consider this a ship, just not a good one. So it would seem that if we want to make sense of concepts, we have to look at them more as a process rather than just some static idea. If you're engaged in any capacity in any political discussion, you've heard people say things such as, that's not real capitalism or that's not real socialism. So we end up pointing to these idealistic standards that have never had any representation in reality. So we never had socialism or capitalism. Yet we often hear people refer to, for example, the successes of capitalism from proponents of such a system in one breath. And then in the next breath, they say something along the lines of, we've never actually had capitalism. I think this dissonance comes from, in one part, viewing capitalism as a process, and another viewing capitalism as a static ideal. So which is it? Say we take the objectivist or ANCAP conception of capitalism, that it must represent full and total private ownership over the means of production. Say there is one law in place that violates this principle. Is this system no longer capitalist? What about 10 laws or 20? They may respond that the system in discussion is mostly capitalist. But if capitalism is defined as the static ideal, how can it possibly be mostly capitalist? It either is or isn't. A ship, if it is to be defined uh, by some static definition, either is or is not a ship. So even just based off a of colloquial usage, these ideas seem to vindicate my notion of capitalism as a process. But what process exactly is capitalism? agorism and counter economics. If we take the static principles, private ownership of the means of production, and break it down to its parts, we can derive many things from this. For example, what is ownership? Ownership is the exclusive legitimate control over a given scarce resource. What are the means of production? The means of production are all things which are used to produce, our bodies, tools, equipment, etc. So capitalism means exclusive legitimate control over our bodies, exclusive legitimate control over external resources, etc. etc. So what does that entail from a normative perspective? Well, this would seem to entail a libertarian principle known as the non-aggression principle. Since forcing one to operate in a certain way would be in violation of their exclusive legitimate control over the resources in question. How does this play into the notion of capitalism as a process? Well, we can interpret interactions through this principle of capitalism that we have laid out and ask, is this a capitalistic interaction? This is where the notion of counter-economics comes into play, the grand black market, exchanges free from physical force. These exchanges are capitalism. Capitalism is the process by which we exchange goods on a voluntary basis, voluntary in the libertarian sense, meaning absent of physical force. But even this process itself is a process and not an easily defined ideal. Like I've talked about in previous videos and articles, certain exchanges can have a degree of counter-economicness to them, if you will. If by the transitive property we view counter-economics to be capitalism, then exchanges can have de degrees of capitalisticness to them. So we should stop looking at capitalism as a state of being that is to be achieved, but rather as a process by which we live. We are striving for a system that maximizes the process of capitalism. A libertarian society is one that maximizes these capitalistic interactions, the one most largely founded upon these capitalistic exchanges. 
And we achieve this society by becoming capitalism in our daily lives. In our daily lives, we must seek to maximize capitalism, maximize the capitalistic processes. Capitalism is not the ideal to be achieved. It is the process by which we revolt against centralization. It is the process by which we prote protest against authority. It is the process by which we secure our fundamental liberties. Capitalism does not allow for freedom. Capitalism is freedom. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and of course, I will see you guys next time.